All the way my Savior leads me Cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living bread What's up? Welcome to the Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. You know what we do. We read the Bible, we discuss it. Isaiah 29 is where we are, and we'll be reading from verse 13 and 14. Just two verses this morning, then I'm going to jump to Matthew's Gospel. We, reading different parts of the book of Isaiah, not all the way through. Finished up 28 yesterday, which I thought was a very helpful chapter. Three week, three days on that, and uh, we've skipped significant portions of the, um, or large portions of the prophecy, and today we are going to jump up to chapter 29 verses 13 and 14 there's going to be a there's a prophecy at the beginning of chapter 29 for a siege that's going to take place in Jerusalem and then these are the words that God says to the people of God through the prophet Isaiah and really I'm going to pick this up in verse 11 instead of verse 14 uh, excuse me instead of verse 13 so let me read it for us now and the vision of all of this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed when men give it to one another who can read saying Read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot read. And now the Lord says, Because this people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, and wonder upon wonder. And the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Now there's a prophecy from Isaiah, from the Lord through Isaiah to his people about the coming works of God. He says, I'm going to have this nation seized. Jerusalem will be seized. The vision will not be understood. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to come and do wonderful works. But verse 13 is an interesting verse because Jesus quotes it later on in Matthew chapter 15. But basically what God is saying is that these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. All their uh, professions, all their uh, religious activities, all of their uh, singing of praises is not coming from the heart. It's coming from the outward desire to please me, and uh, it's simply a, a reference to obeying commandments, not out of love for me. And so the idea here is that the people of God are so consumed with trying to play games that they're, they're simply worshiping from an outward perspective. They're simply serving God from an outward perspective. And their, their fear of him, the fear of the Lord, which is a, a natural response to a heart that's been transformed by grace, a heart that's been captured by the awesome majesty of God. You see, when, when you see God as he is, there's a natural reverence of God when we begin to understand him. And those hearts that have seen God as he is have a natural reverence. They respond to his grace in their life faith, and they love him. And that's different than somebody who's simply going through motions in an attempt to please or to be um, outwardly uh, righteous but inwardly immoral. There's an inconsistency in that person's life. And God says, these people, the people of Judah, are coming to me with outward displays of religion, but not hearts that are transformed by grace, not hearts that are given over to me. And so what he says here is incredibly important. Jesus picks up on this when he talks to the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 15. For God says in verse 13 here, and then again in Matthew 15 through Jesus, you have made commandments. You've added to what I've said, you've made all these different commandments that are, quote, expressions of your devotion to me, and you're doing those things outwardly, but your hearts are not given over to me. You're not worshiping me out of hearts that have been transformed by, your, by my grace, hearts that are given over to me in love and, affirm, and, and, and adoration for me. And he says, verse 14, I, I will again do wonderful things among these people. You know, God, God is a God who shows up, and as he pursues his people, they've turned away. I'm going to come and pursue them. I'm not going to give up on them. I'm going to come and pursue them. I'm going to do wonderful things, and I'm going to show you that the wisest people you think that you know are actually foolish. I'm going to show you that the most discerning people you think you know actually uh, are, 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 are people who cannot discern anything. 
And I'm going to show you the wonderful deeds, the miraculous signs that I'm going to do. And that's what God was doing in Jesus, right? He sent Jesus, Matthew 15, he's healing people, he's calming seas, he's casting out demons, he's teaching beautiful parables. And the Pharisees and the people of uh, the, the religion of the day have missed Jesus as the Messiah. He's doing all these wonderful things in their midst. And the wisest people look foolish. And that's what God is saying he's going to do. And he does that constantly with us. And sometimes when God shows up in miracles of grace and power, we expect him to only do good things. But sometimes those miracles of grace and power, those miraculous works, those wonderful works, are meant to shame the wise. And maybe we ourselves are those who think we're wiser than we are. And when God shows up and does those miraculous things amidst us in our midst, he's really meaning to shame us to bring us to a point of recognition that we are not nearly as wise as we think we are. We are dependent wholly upon him for his wisdom. And so we thank God for his ability, for, for His grace and his love to come and do wonderful things. We also ask God for his grace to forgive us. We also uh, seek to come into his presence with true hearts of worship, those devoted to him in his grace. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. You carry me close to your heart